Lisa Carlton with College Match Point, and this is Bob Carlton also with College Match Point, and we're here today to talk about the trends that we saw for the class of 2020 and the tw trends that we expect in the class of 2021. Bob? Yeah, thanks, Lisa. So for the class of 2020, it was really a story of how the season wrapped up pre-COVID and during the beginning of COVID, and then what changed right after the quarantine and COVID began. In terms of pre-COVID, what we saw is that schools that in the past and majors that in the past had been competitive continued to be competitive. These were the highly selective schools with an admissions rate typically below 15%. These tended to be majors like engineering, computer science, business, nursing. Those colleges and majors continue to be competitive for the class of 2020. We did also see in the competitive schools a continued focus in a four-year arc of activities that were key to depth. Now, certainly these schools can afford to expect both breadth and depth. At some schools, this tended to be key to a student's major. In other schools, it tended to be um, an interest in what a college would refer to as intellectual curiosity. And then finally, at a number of schools, we actually saw for the first time in the last couple of years a reduction in the number of early decision applications. Now, once COVID hit, we saw a couple of quick changes. First off, Colleges went to their wait list at a volume that was really unprecedented in the last several years. Colleges would contact a student and suggest that they'd been taken off the wait list and that that student had a couple of days to answer. We continue to see this and expect to continue to see this all the way through the course of this summer. And then as many of you know, there is continued uncertainty on college campuses questions about will they restart in the fall and what does that restart look like? How much time will students spend in classrooms? How long will the fall be? We also, as a result, are seeing colleges being much more proactive in their efforts to fill classes. And in some cases, colleges responding to their own financial concerns by reevaluating um, families' ability to fund college. This happens to be at the same time that based on changing economic conditions, families are also re-examining how much they can pay for college. Lisa, can you give a little overview on the implications for the class of 2021? Sure. So I think as you, as Bob kind of went through that, you can see that once COVID hit, we really have had an explosion in the college world, one that we haven't really seen in quite a long time. And so the, the ground is still settling a little bit, but there's some things that we already know and that are already impacting our students. And we're gonna talk about those. COVID hit right at spring break. Many students had spent a lot of time planning college trips that sadly didn't happen because the colleges all shut down at that time and it became unsafe to travel. So many students that we're working with in the class of 2021 have actually not had the opportunity to see a lot of colleges on their list. Many of them are utilizing virtual information sessions, tours, talking to people who have gone to those colleges, but the ability to tour to date is, and right now there still are very few tours being offered. I think the other piece that almost every student in the class of 2021 has had to deal with is the standardized testing, ACT and SAT. And we are seeing more and more colleges. I think Friday we saw like five big name colleges, including Princeton, Notre Dame, Georgetown, all going test optional. Now just a little definition here. Test optional is not test blind. Colleges will still look at a student's test scores if they receive them. But what test optional means is you don't have to send test scores. You're not going to have to tell why you didn't send the scores. You just have the option of sending them or not sending them. But for the student who has a strong score, it's still going to be in their advantage to send that score. And when I say strong score, in the middle 50% of the colleges that they're looking at. Now, a few other things that we're seeing is deadline changes. Many of you um, probably know that Texas A&M historically has had the July 1st um, when they open their application. They moved that to August 1st to be consistent with really the rest of the college world pretty much. And then we're also seeing 
Princeton, when they came out with their test optional, they also said, we're going to go from having a November deadline and a January deadline to only having a January deadline. I think this is going to be the beginning of a lot of shifts in deadlines, and I'm guessing we'll know those when the Common App is released in, on August 1st. We'll be able to see that. The other thing kind of in tandem with that shifting deadlines is that colleges want to be able to see a little bit of the students fall of their senior year, given the fact that many of the classes in the spring were test optional. So I think for all those reasons, we're going to see some deadline pushes and probably some asking for some additional information. Of course, this is all unfolding as it's, as it's happening. So I really think we're going to continue to see shifts and things that we may not even be aware of at this moment. As Lisa said, those shifts continue to happen. And we post updates to our Facebook page and to our blog to make sure that we help students and families be aware of this and to help students be prepared to react to this, particularly in the class of 2021.